but it's a little bit more difficult to hold that accountability at the highest level that I found at least when you're like not in an office. Yeah. So how old were you when you went to that seminar that kind of got you into real estate? Um, that was six years ago. So it was 24. You're 24. Yep. Was there any books that you read or anything that kind of like shaped your mindset to where it's like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur before you went to that seminar? Dude, that's a good question. I don't think I even touched personal development at a high level. I wasn't listening to podcasts or reading that many books. In fact, like I didn't like reading books. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was right around the same time I had joined a uh, MLM. Oh, and which right, one, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, World Ventures. Okay, I haven't heard of it. Was a tra- it was a travel club, essentially. Mm-hmm. But um, I had joined that and I had met some people who were aspiring. I mean, you're an entrepreneur if you're doing MLM because you're re- basically running your own business. Mm-hmm. And so maybe I had read a book or tapped into that creative side. But other than that, man, it was not until I went to that education, uh, that conference, until I started hearing about books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You know, I had read... Dean Graciosi, Millionaire Success Secrets, and like all of these other mindset books to where it really shifted everything. What were the books that impacted you the most early on? And I'm sure the ones that you read now, you read it in a different light, right? So early on, it's probably Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because everybody loves Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a staple, for sure. Yeah, but as you get going, there's ones that are more like traction, ones that are more like, you know, so some of the more, you know, thinking fast and slow, the more advanced books out there measure what matters where people get KPIs and all that from. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the books that stood out to you of like every when you read it, it changed your business? Well, here's the thing. Like there are so many good bu- business books out there. Like I read Traction in the beginning and like we follow EOS. It's like people don't you know, don't know who that is like that's how we run our business. Right. It's mm-hmm. an entrepreneurial operating system. And so that was a staple um, but dude, at the end of the day, it's like, it's mindset. Any, any book that you can get your hands on that you can focus on the mindset, like none of us are going to have this figured out. Like I'm still learning and growing as a business owner, as a leader, as a person, because like, if you stop growing, you're basically dying. And so millionaire, um, excuse me. Uh, yeah. Millionaire morning or miracle morning. Have you heard of that book? Yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. So like, it's a super simple concept, right? It's Mm -hmm. like create habits that are going to move the needle. So what were the five habits? It was silence, affirmations, visualizations, exercise, read, and journal. And so I started studying like millionaires and I started studying people who, um, who looked to have it figured out, right? The people who were successful. And I just saw a consistency that these people, they, they gave themselves time to think in the morning. They, Mm -hmm. Um, they surrounded themselves with positive thoughts. They visualized the, what they want for their future. They took care of themselves. They exercised. They read books, right? Mm-hmm. And they, they, they wrote down their thoughts. And so I literally started just waking up earlier, two hours earlier in the morning. Um, you know, six o'clock was early for me, but then it became four. So I was waking up like graveyard hours in the early yeah. beginning days. And I just started consuming myself with nothing but positivity. Like uh, Bob Proctor, you know, secret, like those Mm -hmm. types of things. And at the end of the day, like it's still a mindset thing. Like it's all, it's all, it's all in our heads, guys. I I love that you described it as time to think. Cause when I was younger, I'd hear people say meditate. And I thought that was so corny. The easiest way that you could lose me with anything is just by being corny with things. (laughs) And I just thought that whenever people said meditate, they're just sitting like a Buddhist monk. Like a Buddha, yeah. (laughs) For an hour. But then I heard Naval Ravikant talk about what meditate, what meditation it really is, is just time to think, time to just be alone and think about the day. And when he said it like that, it took the cringe out of it. And I'm like, yeah, you really need the time to, to think and think about all the problems. It's awareness. Like if you, if you don't have time to slow down and ask yourself like why we do what we do, Mm -hmm. um, you're just like, it's like ignorant. Like you're, you're, you're just like running through life without having an understanding of what's happening. It's like, it's like the rat race that people talk about. 
Um, and I, I was there. Like, I, I was there. And, like, if you're not careful, this business can become a rat race. Yeah. Right? So if you don't have time to stop and think and, and ask yourself, like, how do I define success? What does success mean to me? And just because Michael's over here running a remote business doesn't mean that that's going to be a good business for you or just because you're flipping properties. It doesn't mean that I want to flip property. You know what I mean? So like you have Mm -hmm. to ask yourself that question and really think about what you truly want and what's going to serve you in your life.